Hi everyone, David here, and the other day I went to a waterfall that I captured with Reexpose. I use the G-Series 2x Telephoto, which is a wonderful portrait lens, but you don't have to just use it for portraits, as I will demonstrate in just a moment. And I used the CPL filter as well. And I was there for two and a half hours. I captured every minute of it, but I've condensed it down quite a lot into a far more manageable length for you. But it's still detailed, still a comprehensive video, and it should give you a great look and give you some ideas as to what you can do with these G Series products with the Reexpose app. And I hope you enjoy it. So this is what my composition looks like on the mini tripod down here, and I'm really liking it actually. I've got this rock in the foreground over here. On the right, I've got this other rock down here on the left-hand side. The river or the stream leads up to the waterfall, and I've not got a lot of that white blown out sky in, which I'm really liking. So I'm happy that I invested in the wellies, and I made the effort to come across to this side and not just do the lazy thing. So what I can do is break out my new filters. So I've got them all with me here today because I wasn't sure which ones I would need. But the first thing that I need is my adapter. So it's printed on the side of the box. Adapters, and the adapter I'm looking for is the one that connects directly to the phone and not a lens take out the other adapters. These are step-up rings for 67 millimeters. If you're not sure what that means, it means that the iPhone's thread is 17 millimeters and the filter size is 67. So we need to step up from 17 to 67 millimeters, which is a very generous filter size. But today, we're going directly on the phone. So we've got 17 millimeter mount, 67 millimeters on the other side and screw it in. So now I can attach a filter. There's my CPL. Let's see what the CPL does. Now because it's processed, because reheld is processed, it might be tempted to adjust the white balance for me when it detects a change in colour and adjust the exposure when it detects a change in exposure and things like that. So this would be a better uh, re-expose, re sorry, would be a better option for this. So there is our CPL and pay attention to this rock over here and the reflections and stuff like that. So if I turn the CPL, can you see how the reflections are changing? Now that rock I don't really care about, it's the water, but the water, it's the wrong kind of water really. It's, I'm at the wrong angle as well to really see a significant difference in the amount of reflection and stuff like that. So I can keep the CPL on there because we can stack the filters. Well, let's jump into Rehel, uh, Re-Expose, sorry. So we're at ISO 59, which is the lowest. And we're at 81, sec 80, 81 of a second. On over 81 shutter speed. Okay. And you can see the sky is the blue sky coming through over there. Let's just see what's going to happen. Let's just capture three seconds and just see what happens. That's really my best plan of attack at the moment. And then I'm going to come into the dark room to see what's going on. So that exposure is all right on the water. Yeah, it's it's fine. Three seconds is looking good. We can definitely bring up some of these darker areas here. I want to see what effect the CPL has on these darker areas. Come back to re-expose and turn it like that. You can see had quite a big effect there and if we do the same shot again let's see what the difference is okay let's head back over to darkroom 
The reason I go into dark room is because it's a proper raw viewer. Now, let us see what effect the different capture times has. It'd help if I was in focus as well, wouldn't it? So we're at 15 seconds now, and you'll see that that doesn't affect the brightness of the photo because capture time and shutter speed are separate. And that's one of the advantages of frame averaging. The main thing that's affecting the exposure is the shutter speed, not the capture time. So let's see how our picture looks. We come into the dark room. You can see the exposure is the same as it was before. But the water looks a lot nicer now. I'm actually really happy with that. So when it comes to choosing a lens, I don't need to see more of this environment. There's nothing going on. It's not going to add to the photo. I'm probably going to use the wide when I get closer. But right now, I don't need to see any more. So I'm probably, well, I'm not probably, I'm definitely going to choose the telephoto, which is two times nice standard focal length for focusing in on the waterfall. Put the CPL in its box for now just to keep it safe and I will find in my, I've got a big huge mess of filter boxes here. I will find my telephoto which is hiding under here. Screw it on, this is where we do allow screwing. I'm sorry for sniffing. So, let's screw this big daddy onto re-expose. And there we go, there's big daddy. That is now the telephoto's name, big daddy. And let's just make an adjustment. So that's nice, if I can frame up past this rock here, let me move my bag and move. Let's see how far I can go. If I can really utilize that rock. Interesting. Yeah, so we can take up, let's turn the grids on. Take up about a third of the frame with the rock. Now, let's put the CPL back on, but in order to do that, I need another adapter. So, let's pop our CPL back on for those reflections. Give it a good turn there so you can really see what it's doing. And can we maybe come up here a little bit, just to get some of that white sky, the light sky, focus here, and go again. So, I like to call the telephoto a portrait lens, but it's, we're using it for landscapes here today because it gives us that really nice, with the iPhone's built-in wide lens being so wide, it's 24 millimeters equivalent, the telephoto just gives us that nice standard focal length. So let's head over to dark room. And so overall, I think that was a successful shoot. Although, don't be angry at me. I recorded for two and a half hours, condensed it down to eight and a half minutes. So there were a couple of janky cuts in there. But I caught my favourite photo of the day, which is this one, after my camera died after those two and a half hours. So forgive me for not showing you me capturing that. And if you are new to Reflex, then head over to the Reflex Piazza Facebook group where you'll find a whole mix of beginners, pros and everyone in between just sharing their work and sharing what they've been up to with Reflex's products. So you've got a lot of content to look forward to. You've got the detailed stuff, the tutorial stuff and some not so planned, fun, natural, organic like vlog style content as well. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, 
pop them in that Facebook group or leave them in the comments below. And my reflex overlords have asked me to ask you folks to comment on the channel, like the the subscribe button and and things like that. I think that's what they said anyway. So if you could do that, that would be great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.